this lesson, we'll cover the operation of the cutter. It will cover such things as loading the media properly, moving the tool head effectively, stopping the cutter's operation, and making copies. In the lesson on installation and setup, we covered briefly how to load the media. Now we will provide more detailed instruction for loading media into the cutter. To start, let's examine the push rollers and the grit rollers more closely, how they work together, and how to position them correctly. The push rollers have to be located so that the rubber wheel of each push roller is located squarely over one of the grit rollers. It cannot be halfway on as you see here. This is because the grit rollers are what drives the material back and forth. Thus, if the push rollers are not squarely over the grit rollers, the material will not track properly. Because of this, you'll notice that above each grit roller is a black strip that indicates where each grit roller is located and positioned. This is especially helpful when the media is covering the grit rollers. In fact, when one of the push rollers is not squarely over a grit roller, the cutter will display this message to alert us that one or more of the push rollers need to be repositioned. As you position the push rollers, keep in mind that when the cutter initializes, it will use the position of the outside push rollers to determine the cut area width. The cutter then assumes that the outside push rollers are at the edge of the media and will not allow the cutting tool to go beyond the push rollers. Therefore, always position the outside push rollers so that they are on the outermost edges of the media, yet squarely over the grit rollers. You can expand the cut area between the wheels to about 3 eighths of an inch on each side, totaling about 3 quarters of an inch of extra area if need be. This is helpful when cutting jobs that need the extra space without having to tile, therefore getting the most from our media. To expand the area, Simply go to the control panel and press the menu button. Press the 3 key for area parameters. Press the 1 key for expand. Press the up arrow key to increase this value close to 0.4 inches. Press enter to accept the new value. And then press the menu key. Now every time the cutter initializes and finds the two outer push rollers, it will add that amount to the total cut area width, providing the additional needed area. With the larger FC8600 units, there are middle push rollers as well. These additional push rollers are very useful for several reasons. First, they are useful when having to cut heavier materials. Secondly, it can prevent certain materials from bowing in the middle. On the back side of the push rollers is where the pressure of each push roller can be set. The outside push rollers can be set to two pressure levels, medium and strong. The pressure on the middle push rollers can be set to three levels of pressure, low, medium, and strong. Keep in mind that the pressure on the push rollers has to be symmetrical. In other words, they cannot be random pressures. For instance, if you have four push rollers, the pressure for the middle push rollers must be the same. The pressure of the two outside push rollers must be equal, and they have to be equal to or of a greater pressure than the middle push rollers. You can review this in your manual on page 2-15. To load roll media, place it onto the stock rollers. Push the media set lever downwards to bring the push rollers into the raised position. Pull out about two feet of material enough to place through the cutter and insert the front edge through the opening in the back of the cutter keeping in mind to place the edge under the push rollers then pull it through the front of the cutter loading a sheet of media is a little different because the media is best loaded from the front once the media is inserted into the cutter position the outside push rollers over each edge of the media Alignment of the media is highly important to obtain good tracking. When using a roll of media, first set the media stop mechanism. This is found on the side of the stock roller tray near the control panel. When engaged, this prevents the stock roller and the media roll from moving. The media stop works in this way. 
To set the media stop, pull it upwards. To release the media stop, push it downwards. In this case, we'll set it by pulling it upwards. Once the media stop is set, slightly tug on the front end of the media to make it taut. This forces the media to align straight. When aligning a sheet of media, simply use the rib lines on the front. Once the media is straight, take your other hand and bring up the media set lever, which lowers the push rollers. Once the media is loaded, always make sure you release the media stop. Once the media set lever is in the up position, the control panel will display three choices. Roll one rear set, roll two rear set, and sheet. The cutter needs to know what kind of media has been loaded, whether it's a sheet or a roll. Let's select roll two rear set by pressing the two key. When this option is selected, the cutter will determine the width of the media by finding the two outside push rollers. It will find the right outside push roller and then the left outside push roller, return to the home position near the first push roller, and stop there. Roll 2 rear set can be used when there is something already cut on the roll and you would like the cutter to start at the current position. Let's go back to the initial menu of Roll 1 rear set, Roll 2 rear set, and Sheet. And press the 1 key for Roll 1 rear set, front edge. This option will have the cutter do the same type of scan for the two outside wheels, similar to the Roll 2 rear set option, except after the cutter has found the two outside push rollers, it will then find the front edge by retracting the media. This setting is best used when excess media on a roll has been extended out and you'd like to prevent the media waste. Let's go back to the initial menu of Roll 1 rear set, Roll 2 rear set, and sheet again. Let's load a sheet of media this time, and then press the 3 key for sheet. When using this option, the cutter assumes that a sheet of media is loaded and will find the two outside push rollers, the front edge, and then the back edge. Caution is needed when using the sheet option though. Don't ever select sheet if you are cutting a roll of media. If sheet is chosen, you may find that all the media on the complete roll has been fed through the cutter in an attempt to find the back edge. After this, the cutter will display that it is in ready mode. This indicates that the cutter is ready to accept a job from the computer software. If we go back to the initial menu, you'll notice that there is an added menu option, Continue. This only appears after relatching the set lever while the cutter is turned on. Pressing the 4 key chooses this option. When pressing the 4 key, the cutter will assume that the push rollers have not moved and will keep the cut area the same. This eliminates the need for the cutter to go through the initialization routing of finding the edges. There will be times when the tool head needs to be repositioned. For instance, when positioning the tool over a registration mark when cutting a printed image, the tool will have to be moved to that location. The arrow keys can be used for this purpose. Pressing the up and down arrow keys will move the media back and forth. The left arrow key will move the tool carriage to the left, and the right arrow key will move the tool carriage to the right. Keep in mind that the arrow keys can be used in combination with each other. For instance, if we press the left arrow key and the down arrow key, the tool carriage will move diagonally. You'll notice that the tool doesn't move that quickly. In fact, it moves slowly. To speed up the movement, hold down the arrow key and then press the fast key. This will speed up the tool head movement, allowing us to move the tool quickly to a new position. Once the tool carriage has been repositioned, Pressing the origin key on the control panel will let the cutter know that this is the new starting point to cut from. When the cutter is cutting a job, there may come a time when there's a need to pause the cutting action. For instance, you may want to change a setting, a condition value that will improve the cutting, stop the cutter altogether, or straighten the media. 
To pause the cutter for changing a setting, simply press the menu key and then change the setting. To stop the cutter immediately, press the stop button. The cutter will conveniently allow the set lever to be released so that the media can be straightened. The cutter will then display these two choices, continue and quit job. Continue will continue with the current cutting operation and quit job will stop the job completely. In this instance, we just need to straighten the media so we can press the one key to continue. Let's stop the cutting operation again. This time, let's choose the second option, Quit Job, by pressing the 2 key. This will display a second screen asking us if we would like to clear the buffer. If we want to quit the job, we have to clear the buffer. It is really just ensuring that we really do want to stop the job, in which case clearing the buffer is necessary. It provides the option to cancel, but in this case we can press the 1 key. When either the menu or condition key is pressed, the cutting operation may or may not pause immediately. Don't be concerned with this. It continues to cut in order to find a good spot to pause. If you have a hard time remembering which button does what, the stop key will stop the cutter immediately, allowing the media to be adjusted. The menu key will pause the cutter, allowing you to change the cut settings. And pressing the condition key will pause the cutter as well, but allowing you to change a cut condition settings directly. You'll notice that there is a copy button on the control panel of the cutter. When making copies, we often recommend that you use your software to make the copies, rather than using the copy function on the cutter. The reason for this is that the software provides a better sense of how the copies will lay out. This is especially true when adjusting the spacing between the copies. There are times though when the copy function on the FC8600 can be more productive than using your software. Imagine for a moment that you want to make several copies of a certain design on individual sheets of vinyl. From the software, you would have to send the design for each copy produced, then after the copy is cut, you'd have to unload the sheet, load a new sheet, initialize the cutter, send another copy from the software, and repeat that process over and over again. This would be a daunting task. When using the copy function, this makes the process simpler and more productive. It eliminates the need to send individual copies of the design each time there is a new sheet of media. Then we have to tell the cutter that we will be changing media between the copies and how many copies there will be. To start the process, load the first sheet. Press Roll 1 and then send the design from the software. Once it has completed cutting, change the media and press Roll 1 again. It's at this point that we can then press the Copy key on the control panel. This will display the copy menu. Press the 1 key for Media Change Mode. Press the 2 key to turn it on. This will return to the copy menu. Next we can set the number of copies by pressing the 2 key. We can press the up arrow to increase the number of copies. We could enter as many as we want, but for demonstration purposes, we'll set the number to 3 for a total of 3 extra copies. Then we just press enter and it will start cutting the first copy. Once the copy is completed, a message to load the next sheet will appear. We can now remove the sheet that has been cut and load the second sheet. Once the media set lever is latched, the cutter will immediately scan for the media without even asking us to press Roll 1, Roll 2, or Sheet, and then start cutting the second job. Once the second job is complete, we can load the third sheet, latch the set lever, and it will cut the third copy. This process will continue until all the copies are cut. If at any point you need to stop the process, press the left arrow key. What's nice about this feature is that it allows you to have an unlimited number of copies. As you can see, this is a great production benefit when you need to make multiple copies of the same design on different sheets of media.
The crosscut function is very handy in that it delivers a nice straight cut across the media. The way this works is, first press the crosscut button. The display will show a couple of options. At the bottom of the screen there are icons indicating that the arrow keys can be used to move the tool head and the media to the exact location of where we want it to slice across the media. At this point we can either press the 1 key to perform the crosscut or press the 2 key to cancel the crosscut. In this case we'll press the 1 key. The cutter cuts the media from the middle using an auxiliary blade with the tool head. Once the cut is complete, it will try to shake it off. When cutting thick material, if it can't cut through the first time, it will attempt to cut it two more times. 